perhaps, well, that's for sure that it's not a decoration function, something like that, so it's a semantic function. And uh, in the Lille language, they say, they call it kapan. Yes, in, in Chinese, it is said that it's a hu yao dai, that it's a protective belt. So maybe uh, this is a kind of confirmation of some kind of protection function of this ornament, uh, because we have found this ornament not only uh, on some wig, uh, some belts for hand loom, uh, but what more, on the houses and on the shutters, so um, on Li hunting bags also, maybe also a protection function. So this is actually the question we wanted to discuss and we wanted to um, discuss with all the scientific community of Vietnam, uh, the, you know, the semantics of uh, this ornamentation. Because here, uh, in the ethnographic museum, such an ornament is found both on the needlework cases and on all the walnut houses, on shutters, which perhaps has also has a protection function, we don't know. So similar decoration of walls are common for Ainu, also on the walls, and the technique of making such a wicker work is absolutely the same with the North of Siberia. And uh, uh, one more very interesting example uh, is a shoulder box from... Okay, uh, from Barnell. And uh, um, this is all, so also interesting in this case because this ornament decorates only one side of the box, so the one that is directly adjacent to the man's back. So it's not a decoration function again. So uh, we can, it's just an example. So we can name not only this ornament but also another quite similar, uh, like this one from the Dinsky Gradok from the north of Siberia and, and uh, from Barneo again or these uh, fish images from uh, Paluski Gradok and the Hunters of Gatherance of Hainan Island. Uh, this is one of the most interesting and most uh, discussing example because, well, swastika, well, as, not as a separate image, but as some kind of line that borders the picture. Well, here uh, it is considered to be a Buddhist symbol, but we have found absolutely the same. Um, also borders the picture, so it's at the edges, and it's the first century BC, so it cannot be uh, uh, somehow connected to the Buddhism. Or some of uh, this also, so quite a lot of them, and also this meanders, uh, which show the movements of winds, of clouds, so the technique is also the same. So, speaking again about the northern peoples of Siberia, for us, this the ornaments are interesting in the context of the formation and resettlement of the ancestors of the peoples of northern Siberia. So, uh, scientists attribute their migration processes to the upper Paleolithic, to the early Neolithic, when the climate changes caused by global warming of the Atlantic climate period open the way to the north for the inhabitants of southern territories. So the early Neolithic indeed uh, is characterized by increased mobility of population in comparison with, for example, the upper Paleolithic. And it is obvious that the mankind was not formed in uh, northern Eurasia, but what where were the initial migration points? We don't have any answer yet. And according to the paleoecologists in the early Neolithic, the middle and polar Ural was characterized by large forests and a climate that allowed uh, people to settle down and to stay in that region. And of course, adapting to the new conditions somehow changed the traditions of Asian tribes, but there maybe were some conservative spheres of human life where tradition was stronger than any of adaptive processes and remained unchanged for thousands of years. It is possible to find some relict features, some stable markers that indicate the resettlement of ancient human that preserve the original meaning. Well, after all, we know such an example actually of this kind of stable markers, 
Like, for example, um, the one uh, which is with the change of generations, with the appearance of new technologies, nothing changed. So the semantic component remained unchanged. Here I mean uh, the needle cases from uh, diaphysis of the uh, tubular bird bones. So both epiphyses were cut off in order to make a hollow tube uh, with a rather thin walls. So such bone needle cases appear in the Neolithic and they have existed for a long time in many cultures from the Stone Age and for example uh, in the Metal Age along with the ones made from bones metal needle cases appear and they are exactly similar with in shape and their size with those who were made from hollow bird bones. So, and these are the example of modern ethnography. So, uh, these needle cases from bird bones are used even in modern ethnography. So, for Asian countries, the tradition of weaving, making weaker ornaments out of organic material is characteristic feature up to present day. But in the north, of, uh, this tradition gradually degraded and only some of the elements remain unchanged on some conservative spheres, for example, on ritual needlework. But when Russian, uh, Russians appeared in West Siberia, they uh, somehow changed a lot the spiritual life and uh, spiritual culture. So the uh, exploration of Siberia and the beginning of Russian colonization led to a further loss of the cultural identity and to the spreading of Russian culture influence. But Wicca ornaments disappear as rudiments of traditional culture with the development of technology. But perhaps they, uh, the Wicca ornaments which are so typical for the Eastern Asia are the example of some common cultural basis and can point out the connections between Asian population of the South and the North of Asia. So, um, this report uh, is not a kind of a strict conclusion or something like that, it's just uh, a kind of a topic for the discussion. And as I said, it's an invitation for cooperation, uh, not only in ethnography but also in archaeology, to investigate and to clear the white spots in ancient history of Eurasia. Thank you for the attention. in the north of Siberia are, um, cannot, uh, cannot uh, have the uh, organic material to stay long. So the only uh, situation when organic materials cannot be, uh, can, can be found is the frozen layer. Yes, so that's, that's why uh, there are no, not many of them. Yeah, I see, because in, in the tropical area it's very difficult to find the um, plant remains uh, like the organic material because only like destroyed by the temperature and humidity. And um, so the second one is uh, the, what materials, uh, what they make for, the, you mean the, the burst baguettes, they make from bamboo or from uh, what Birch kind bark. Of? Birch bark. Ah, Sometimes grass, I see. and it's probably that's it. So there, are, there are very thin, thin stripes. It's uh, usually no more than one centimeter, so they are very thin. But usually a birch bark in ninety percent. Thank you. So we just. 
just wanted to discuss if this idea is somehow very um, can can it be possible these wide migrations or or not? Because well, for example, in the agricultural uh, areas of China, uh, we cannot find uh, this kind of materials. Only the modern ethnography of hunters and gatherers, or probably living, for example, on Hainan Island, or maybe uh, the indigenous peoples of uh, Vietnam. So. Uh, this is actually um, the main reason we came here, in order to have a collaboration with the uh, Vietnamese uh, archaeologists and ethnographers to find more examples about these connections and maybe that uh, wide migrations up to the north. So we have some books also prepared for the library of the Institute of Archaeology and the letter of cooperation. So we're, we are very open to any uh, kind of cooperation, any uh, kind of work together. I'm, I'm sorry that if I'm not clear about your discussion, but I still want to know more about the, uh, what about the environment for the site, because you talk about the uh, several centuries BC, up to 15th, 17th century. Uh, if uh, you still find that, it means that in the, the environment there is available with that kind of material, is it? Yeah, in the early Neolithic, the environment was completely different because, of course, there were large forests. It was uh, pretty uh, convenient for uh, uh, the migrants from the south to settle down in the area. But, of course, afterwards the climate changed a lot and so they had to adapt to the colder temperatures, to the colder weather and to, to uh, this kind of transformations. But so. Uh, it depends on a period we're talking about. So the early Neolithic is quite warm, it's quite comfortable. But of course, the Middle Ages, well, not that comfortable. <laughs> okay, but still, I, uh, when you talk about the similarity between the, the material, the, the artifact there, with something in Thailand or Vietnam, mm -hmm. so it means that it's at the same time the two areas have the same environment.